What up, plans? It's Warboss Tea up in this mud. We're painting up our Mornfang cavalry up to this standard. Here are the paints you're going to be using. Started off with Steel Legion Drab, Abaddon Black, Rakarth Flesh, Doom Bull Brown, Bugman's Glue, or Block Bronze, Lead Belcher. That's it, very simple colors for the base coats and in just a little while we'll come back and we'll tackle the ogre with base coats and then we will wash and do final highlights. Thanks for watching. Latest players. Hey players, we're gonna start by painting our Mornfang Calvary up. So the first color we're gonna use is Steel Legion Drab. And before this, we primed our model in a nice matte black primer. You can also use gray. Um, white might be a little bit more difficult to work with. And I'm not going to paint too much the top of our Mornfang. I'm also using a big brush, the wash brush. And oh, I've got my wet palette here next to me, so I'll be using that as well. So we're gonna give our Mornfangs that awesome uh, striped look that the ones on the Games Workshop website have. It's really easy to do and it's not only easy, but it looks it looks pretty cool. So yeah, this this video is kind of dedicated to one of my one of my fans, uh, Ryan Rancid Stains, Spunky, whatever you're going by now, buddy. Uh, thank you for following and for your. Your patience. I know you've requested this video so many times over the years, and um, I'm glad I could kind of get to it now. So I'm already starting to block off the the stripey pattern on our Morn Fang. Uh, you don't have to worry about blocking it out accurately, because we're gonna go back and kind of really, really block it out with with the Abaddon Black paint. But for now trying to get an approximation and I'm going along the the leg our guys leg here the stripe is kind of gonna going to oops follow the curvature of his leg and same thing with the back here we don't want to paint the tail steel legion drab we're gonna leave the tail black and we're actually going to give him black stockings. So I, I actually, I don't know why I'm painting his all the way down there to his legs, uh, since we're gonna be giving him black stockings. But we're going up. You do wanna get the ear. The ear will be brown. And we're getting the cheek. His cheek and his like his snout area. Each one of these are so cool. They all have different details. This one's got a little skull hanging right there from his chinny chin chin. If you've got an air gun, this, this part will take faster, less time. Uh, I'm, I'm actually getting into, looking into starting up with with an air gun airbrush uh, it's probably gonna take a while though because I'm gonna need to find a good compressor but I've already got some some great stuff from Badger 
airbrush company and um, yeah I can't wait to to start. I know Chung from Wargamers Consortium has some really great videos. There are a lot of good instructional videos out there on how to use a use an airbrush and I'm gonna need to look at all of them. So let's talk a little bit about these Morn Fang. They're they're real shock troops for the ogres. They go in and they they charge up the flanks and they really just smash apart anything that stands in their way. I think this was... were these guys released before the Empire? I think they were, so what happened was um, these models came out and they only come two in a box. You only get two of these guys and I think a lot of people were like, what are you talking about? Two models for how much money we're spending and we're only getting two models? That's ridiculous, like they've never... It's never been anything like that before. You do want to get the feet. So, I'm sorry, I forgot you do want to get the feet with your Steel Legion Drab, just not the not the legs, if you can. The lower part of the legs, we're going to, like I said, make stockings. Or dark black, like leg warmers. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people were not, were surprised, were not too happy with the fact that Games Workshop was releasing models, so few models, that that meant basically like in America each model cost something like twenty, twenty-five dollars when you add add the two of them in the box up and a lot of people weren't willing to pay that when the ogres were uh, coming out last uh, last edition or this edition rather they uh, were seen as very expensive because I guess you don't get as much money or you don't get as much for your money you don't get as much figures as you do with say the Empire so I mean it's it just depends on how much you think it's worth right if you think they're worth the the money then you're gonna pay it and it's gonna be fine uh, there's some people who do not think it's worth the money and so they refuse to pay it They'd rather play a skirmish game like War Machine or Infinity, and you know that's that's totally fine too. To each his or her own. So I guess I'll talk about it now. The podcast is going really well, you guys. We just wrapped for those of you who haven't heard it the second episode of my podcast with Lady Boss. It's called General Nonsense, and it's that's pretty much what it is. The Lady Boss coined the term in episode one, right at the beginning. Uh, I I couldn't think of a of, of a name for the show. It was just going to be the War Boss Tay and Lady Boss late night late night talk show, and it, it uh, she she thought of a great name for it, and she called it General Nonsense, and I was like, that's it. That's the name. That's the name. All right, so at this time, you should be all painted up in the middle. Yeah, we are going to try to get... You do want to get their upper legs. Uh, the stockings are going to hit just the lower legs below the knee, but you do want to hit the, the upper legs of these guys. Both sides. All right, and there you go. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to paint the uh, black design onto the back. So you're going to be getting Abaddon black paint. And where is mine? There it is. Abaddon. Palette going right here. Abaddon black on it. So what we're doing, I'm going to start at the at the head, and we're going to hit right here. Let's 
do him a bit. We're going on the forehead. They've all got these weird like lumps, bony lumps on their heads, which I guess helps them charge and be obstinate and brave in battle. I guess maybe not brave, maybe obedient is a better word. And you want to just go right behind the ears. On this side, right behind the ears. And then you're just going to take that black and wash it all the way up. The first stripes don't happen until the shoulders, so we're just getting a long strip of black paint down the back of the head right here to the back. Now, Avedon Black is really shiny paint, so um, when it dries, it's going to have a little bit of a shine to it. And you don't want that to affect your eye when you're doing the, the highlights. So, there's not really much you can do about that. I'm just letting you know ahead of time that that might... Some people's eyes have a hard time adjusting to the, to the light reflecting off of certain paints. All right, so now I can back up just a bit. We're blacking out the design for the stripes. And the goal is we want two stripes on the part, on the, on the four legs. So I'm trying to think of doing two, two solid sharp stripes. So the first one will be right here. Not all of them have this cut in the shoulder too. And then I want it to kind of, because he's got his leg back a little bit, I want it to fall just like that, so that the stripe is going down and this way, because that's kind of the way his leg is reared. That makes sense. Okay, the second stripe is going to be right down this guy's back, right down his side, right behind his, his four legs. So you're just going to make a little, just a little stripe of black. And you kind of want it to, to fade. to a point so you can't really see because the point would be behind the foreleg here but if you're looking at it from like from the front of the model you can kind of see that there's this one stripe here and then another stripe going down that side oops so same thing for the other side this is why using a bigger brush is probably a little bit better you get a, um, more more paint, and uh, if if you're using like a like a detail brush or something smaller, then it's going to be it's going to be a little bit harder to get the paint to flow the way you want it to. Okay, this side we're going to be a little bit more severe with our stripe because his leg is kind of hooked back like he's like he's prowling forward not really running um, but kind of prowling forward so his stripe is gonna be a little bit more pronounced like that then his second one it's just gonna curve back under by the saddle Boom, right there now going to the back side you can either do one or two stripes, depending on how uh, how intricate you want to get. I will only go with one, and these do not have to be deep because uh, some of them have like their their calves exposed here, and uh, you you don't want the stripe going down their skin. You only want a kind of a design in the fur or a pattern rather than in the fur, not a design.
Beautiful. Okay, then you want to paint the tail all the way down, both sides. like that and a little bit more paint you want the, the we'll call it the butt stripes to you want them to be a little bit a little bit more severe it looks like this guy's got stuff going on there so we'll leave it at that uh, the steel legion drab here is still a little bit wet, so we'll continue on. Yeah, so so most of them you don't have the back leg obstructed, but this one the back leg is kind of obstructed. What I mean by that is that it's uh, got a tear open in the fur, and then the skin is underneath. So we'll just leave that for now. That's fine. Um, but we do want to make the the impression of that stripe and I always paint downwards when you're doing this work uh, it's a it's a question people might think of like do you paint going like against the grain or with the grain and for for all this stuff I say against the grain is better so this side I have a little bit more room to paint so I'm gonna paint the stripe that I couldn't paint on this side gonna have it funnel to a point right there and you just want to make sure that it it evens up like that okay while we wait for the steel legion drab there on the top to dry we're gonna hit the stockings of our Morn Fang now so you want more paint on your brush and water. I'm, I'm thinning down the paints, but I really, I don't think with Abaddon Black that you have to. Abaddon Black is already a very watery kind of consistency, and I found that when I water it down even just a little bit, it kind of changes the whole way that it flows. It doesn't flow as well. Your brush control is going to be a lot a lot more janky if you water down your Abaddon Black. It's too bad because I think Ceramite White is a good thick consistency to the point where I have to really water it down, but uh, Abaddon Black, on the other hand, I almost am using it like straight out of the pot. Okay, if you see any legs where there's no fur, then you just want to kind of paint the stockings around them because the stockings are like I said earlier only going on the fur more French stocking feet Lewis black on the fur Lewis the ogres looking at Let's be quiet, I'm painting. But I'm singing my club song, Warboss Tay. Alright. So you can tell by looking, you zoom in here, that I thinned down the Abaddon Black with some water, and you can see the brown peeking up from underneath because stupid Abaddon Black is too stupid thin so you can see it kind of peeking up that just means you have to wait a little bit wait until it dries and then and then go back in later so we will do that we will wait and while we wait we're going to take Doombo Brown and we're going to paint the saddle in with a smaller brush Well, I've got this uh, Citadel, I guess, standard brush I'm going to use. And 
it's got just some of its some of its bristles pushed in. I hate that. It's going the other way than it's supposed to, and it's just uh, painter problems. Hashtag over it. I never understood the whole hashtag thing, master. Neither have I, Igor. I thought I was just because I was a uh, technologically illiterate crypt ghoul. But then I realized that hashtags is just not for me. I'm getting too old for this. You and me both, brother. So while we're painting this, let's talk a little bit about the July painting challenge, you guys. It's gonna be so awesome. I've already, I've already developed the uh, questions, the daily questions. The lady boss has been working on her checklist. For those of you who don't know, this year we're doing something a little bit different, as well as having my forum posts on Daka Daka with all the daily questions, and as long as, or as uh, along with, I should say, the videos you'll see on my page, my lady boss girlfriend has been so kind and awesome enough to volunteer to make a uh, a lady boss page on Facebook and not only that but to start up a challenge of her own geared specifically towards um, gamers wives spouses girlfriends and I, I just I think it's so awesome I think it's the greatest thing ever so if you have any interest in that or if you're if your wife or girlfriend has ever bugged you about painting all throughout July, making videos every single night, then please feel free to jump along with us. So I've been painting the saddle that our guy is riding on, and we're gonna use Steel Legion Drab as well for the wood part. So the saddle is basically the saddle harness that's wrapped around the Morn Fang, and then this metal like contraption thing with some wood showing out underneath. Some of the wood pieces are hidden by uh, horn pieces. If you have those and you've glued those on, that's an option. This one that I'm currently painting uh, did not put the horns in the front, which is fine. Less uh, tricky highlighting work for me. Just getting in all the angles now to get at the wood that the guy is sitting on. Okay, we're doing great. I think we're doing great. And take Rakar's flesh now, and we are going to paint the tusks. Hello. You don't even have to. Uh, Water, Rackarth Flesh down, that's oh, another one, Rackarth Flesh is another one that is thin enough to be used on its own, especially if you've just cleaned your brush with water, gotten rid of another paint, so that water is still clinging to the brush, and uh, that's perfect for Rackarth Flesh, it's just enough for him to get a, a good coverage of your model. So there are the tusks for now. While you've got the Rackard flesh on your brush, you can also give a little highlight 
to the skulls hanging all around our good Mornfang rider. I'm looking, I'm looking, and it looks like the bottom is dry. The reason why we went and did all that other stuff for just a little while is because we're getting ready to paint the bottom part of our Mornfang. And we're going to be using Rackarth Flesh. So... Starting with the hair on his chinny chin chin. This doesn't have to be highlighted. This can kind of go over the entire part of the model that we're going to be doing. You also want to hit his lips if you can with the rack hard flesh. Any other bared teeth that you might have, and then finally his snout. You don't want to get his eyes, don't get his eyes. We're just getting his, from his mouth down. Now we're going to take our rack art flesh and we're going to work our way down the model. After you paint the little, little piece of warbly skin hanging from his neck there, I like to paint a couple layers of fur sprouting up under his chin, like that. Do that for the other side next. And you just want to find two levels of fur and paint it like it's coming down his neck. And the fur is going to expand a little bit as it's going down the model. So when it gets to about here, we're painting the, repainting the legs almost. Yeah, in fact, I think that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're repainting stuff in the new, these colors. And a couple ways you can do this, you don't have to have your guys sound like they're turning traitor against the Imperium. What am I, what am I talking about? Um, dozing off here. While I'm painting? Oh, man. Thinking about how to explain in another video, I've got a Death Corps of Krieg Fluff Hunters. All right, so there you can see the back leg, the effort that I put into the back leg. You have to look at it from the front, from the side, and of course from the back. And then just paint the mirror image on the other side of his leg. Yeah, so I'm going to be making some, some videos to go along with my July painting challenge, of course. So, painting the underbelly. Painting right under the chest here. stockings. I love it. I think it's cool. I think you've got, you've got this really cool split of colors. It's a really cool look. A um, couple more things we're going to do on our Morn Fang before we put them down for a little while. Not for good. 
I'm going back to the Doombull Brown to paint finish the work I started here on his harness. Forgot all about it. Okay, if you make a mistake like I just did on the body, you can just go back with the appropriate color or you can try to blend it, cover it, move it in. And we're just dragging the Dumbo Brown down, down, down to the bottom of his throat. Don't forget to flip the model kind of upside down almost because there you can really see the leash that's been put around their necks. Okay, there you have it. Okay, so what I was really talking about was the skin. So I'm going to try to make them match the riders. So I'm using Bugman's Glow as a base. So this is any kind of exposed skin for whatever reason. The owner shaved them down to give them a branding or something like that. It's a fine idea. It's really just an excuse to have a splash of this kind of like separate color. So there's one, you want to just paint up to the edge, if you can, the edge of the, the fur, where the fur meets the skin. Oops. Second one is here in the foreleg, and then slowly kind of transforms into here the rest of the leg a little bit. Just want to be careful with that. And last but not least, up here. Alright, there you go, there you have it. Morn Fang painted up, ready to go. I'm gonna put a little bit more Radcard flesh on the back leg, but other than that, the Morn Fang is pretty set and solid. The throne we didn't get to today. We're gonna wait on the throne until a couple more steps. So don't worry, we are gonna paint. We're going to paint the throne, the metallic parts and all that. We want to get them all together so we're not mixing our paints and our paintbrushes too much. And there you go, part one, how to paint a Morn Fang. Well, we might as well. <clears throat> we might as well, we might as well. If you don't do anything else today, you can do this. Work block bronze. I mean, if you don't do anything else on the day that you make your day that you make your Morn Fang models, then I just, I don't want you to blame me. Oh, Warboss Tail only took us to painting up towards the saddle. He didn't really do anything after that. Don't tell him that. 
You've got these horns sticking out the back of your saddles if you haven't seen them. Everything else we're going to paint this funky... If you had the old tin gits, tin bits, I mean, that's what this looks like. Okay, sorry, uh, ran out of film, so continuing to jam. Got my warp lock bronze, and we're just looking for any any metal on our throne. Little saddle. So there's this metal bit on the front here of the saddle that we're painting as well. And usually it's, you know, we only paint any pieces that are going to be darker or coppery. But we're also painting anything that's going to have a silver finish as well. Just any any metal on the front of the model we're painting with warp lock bronze. The one exception to this rule is if you can see right at the front of the worn fang or the back of the neck is like a little plate, a little little catch. So you're going to paint that in Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher. I don't think there's anything else that needs the Lead Belcher treatment, just that. Um, for Oh, actually no, on the sides of the saddle, you've got like the little stirrup things or little buttons hooks, catches, so we do paint that in lead belcher as well. Alright, um, continuing on with this, whatever this is in the back of our guy here, uh, we're going to paint lead belcher onto the knife. If you're using a knife, hanging knife accessory, the blade is going to be lead belcher. That. Meanwhile, the horns. Actually, before we get to the horns, let's finish up the knife with Rackarth flesh on the bandages where the handle is. This side, there, okay now the horns on the back we are going to paint in Celestra Grey. So Celestra Grey is a great almost white color. And I use a little bit of a bigger brush. A little bit of a bigger brush for this one, as I was saying. Okay, the thing is, Celestial Grey is a nice thick color, or thick paint. So, if you're using a bigger brush like I am, it saves time. You just want to make sure you feather it while you're painting it on. If you don't feather it, then it'll clump, it, it'll ruin the, clog up the details. Nobody wants to see that. And there are some studs in the bone that you don't have to worry about painting yet. i leave those for now.
And that's it. There you have it, everybody. Our Mornfang, all painted up, ready for battle. The Mornfang itself, the rider, we're gonna get on to next, so stay tuned for that. But thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial, and we'll see you in the next one. Later, players!